Hi there. On this week's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be exploring the various different ways in which you can get X particles to collide with each other. So this is particle to particle collisions. There's three different ways of doing it and the method that you choose depends on your use case really. So let's explore those methods. We'll jump into Cinema 4D and start the clock. In our scene then we've got these particles being pulled down by a gravity, they're interacting with our ground geometry because it's got an XB collider tag on, but if we dolly in you'll see the particles are not colliding with each other, they're just intersecting. So how do we set that up? Well the most basic quick way of doing it is with one of our dynamic objects. If we go to dynamics and we look in the objects list, we can use an XP constraints. Now, XP constraints can do all kinds of cool stuff, which we'll explore in other videos, but one of the things it's got, look, it has a collisions tab. So if we go in there and simply activate collisions, there's only one setting here, the stiffness. Now this is particle to particle collisions, so now when we hit play, you'll see that our particles are interacting with each other. And look, we're no longer getting those intersections, they are colliding and interacting as we would hope. So it's a really quick and easy way of setting up particle to particle collisions. It's quick to calculate, but obviously it's not very sophisticated. We only have this one stiffness setting. So another way of doing it, let's get rid of our XP constraints, is another dynamic object. So let's go back into our dynamics, into the objects, and we have an actually dedicated particle to particle collisions object. XPPP collisions. So let's bring that in and within this object we have a lot more control and if we hit play just in default you'll see that we're getting the same nice particle to particle collisions. So we've got no intersections and they're all bouncing off each other but look we've got loads more settings in this. We've got bounce so this isn't bounce with the floor this is how much the particles bounce when they hit into each other. We have variation we have friction settings as well so the particles are more likely to kind of stick together once they've made that collision. We have a scatter setting which gives them kind of a random uh, direction when they bounce with another particle to make things look a little less uniform and then we've got loads of other options spawning when they collide we can connect particles on collision all for really cool more intricate effects but in its basic form that works really well now the problem with both PP collisions and constraints is that they work out the collision between particles in a spherical way based on the particle radius so if we're viewing our particles as spheres it's fine it looks perfect However, if we were to go to our emitter display tab and change it from spheres to boxes filled, for example, we're going to see two problems. The first problem is that although the collisions will work, they're being based from a spherical calculation, which means that we are getting intersecting of the corners of our boxes because it's, it's not working out um, a collision based on a cube, it's working it out based on a sphere. And the other issue we have is that we get no rolling, no interaction with the ground really, they, they just keep the same orientation, um, there isn't any spinning. So if we want more sophisticated collisions that respect the particle display, then we can't use this. So let's get rid of our PP collisions. And instead, we, used, uh, we need to use XP bullet. So to do that, um, we need to get rid of our XP collider here, because we have a bullet specific one. So on the ground, we'll go to tags, extensions, insidium, bullet, and we'll bring in a bullet collider. And then on our emitter, we're going to put a bullet tag. Let's go to tags, extensions, insidium, bullet, rigid body. We'll leave it in default, hit play. And now you can see, look, we're getting nice rolling and bouncing of our particles as they interact with the ground. We're getting them interacting with each other. And now they are respecting that particle display type. But obviously we've got settings for bounce and friction and scatter here as well. If we go to our emitter, 
to the display tab change it from boxes filled to a different display type look let's pick pyramid it'll respect that shape and now it's solving these collisions based on this pyramid shape of our particles we can even do it look let's pick arrow filled we can even base our um, interaction and collisions based on this arrow look so for much more sophisticated particle to particle collisions we're able to use the xp bullet system